So without further ado, let's move into an actual modeling. So I would start a new document by clicking on the folder in here and simply click on new. Create a new scene, yes. This is what you would see in a normal scene. What you probably would have different is that you would have a different background, which is totally fine. I would change my background. Uh, sorry, I would change my lighting setup, which is my environment. And I will do that to keep it so uh, neutral. So I have this, which I've downloaded from the internet, which looks like a studio. And as you can see, it's quite bright. I also would like to change my background into being the environment itself and that would affect nothing in your design so this is our scene if i have one figure one finger it's like orbiting around if i have two finger it's like panning so if i want to orbit it could be one finger and then i could pan but also if you would like not to use your fingers you could simply use this cube in here as a reference but your pencil would look similar so if i use my pencil on this cube i am orbiting around and it's the same for my finger what i like to use sometimes is click on reset and that would bring it back where it has front i can snap again and that would bring it to the back so this is a basic let's look into the geometry so this is pretty much detailed since we are doing a donut, so we don't need this shape at all. What I need to do is I'll go to my scene and I will delete this. And now I have the option to bring any new primitive I would like. In this case, what I would like to bring is the torus. And as you can see, we start to have what looks like a donut. In the new nomad sculpt version you would get this helping tool so think of any object you're bringing at the beginning as a primitive that you can't work on you need to validate it validated mean you need to save the setting of that resolution and that dimension so as it is not validated now i am happy to go to my typology or topology and then try to change if I want the density or if I want the radius and in this case since we are making a donut I think it would be really helpful to mimic a donut by the way if you are want to work from an image which is something I usually do you could simply go to the background here and you can click and import a new image by clicking on this cross. However, I have already created an image. I haven't created it. I eat donuts. I've never created a donut, but I have downloaded it from uh, online. And you can simply, if you are not happy with the way that your reference image is, you can, for example, go rotate it you can scale it and you can move it and in this case i would move it to be somewhere to the side and i want it to be smaller and this is just for me to try to understand how donuts work if you have no clue how donuts work so i keep this on the side and now i come back to my topology and i have a torus in the topology torus, I can change my division. And this definition, divisions is set to have constant. I can change this to be X, Y, and Z separately. And think of this as your resolution, as I mentioned before. So if I have my resolution somewhere as at 42, that's too much. 30 would be enough. I can always change my resolution moving forward. Once I have that in place, I can simply validate it. So let's validate this. Now, just to make sure that you are correct, in the torus geometry, you can change the radius outer and the radius inner. And I've changed this briefly to reflect how this donut looked like. There's always this happy accidents that you would go through. So 
the most important bit is to experiment. By the way, if you suddenly click on mirror, you would find that there is a mirrored version of your donut. So rather than using one, you could use more than one. I don't need a mirrored version. I just need this to be, and I click on validate, and now I have my donut ready to be worked on. I want you to get used to the scene. So if I go to the scene here, you can see that there is a torus underneath and it was added. I can change this to be a donut or a body. So let me delete this, uh, delete this and click body. Uh, what I mean by body is like the actual donut body. <laughs> so not the glazing or the flavor on top, if that makes sense. So in here, I have body in place. If you want this to start feeling like a donut, then you might want to start thinking about the glazing. In order to do a glazing, we could use this as a reference and add a layer on top of it, but that would take time. I would like to have a, a different object, so a separate object that create this glazing. In this case, I would like to use mask. And mask with symmetry on, you can see that I can now mask whatever object I would like. Because I'm masking an object on a lower resolution, you can see that there is this impact or this effect of some kind of pixelation. And I show you how to somehow get rid of that. I have been turning symmetry on and that's why I've been able to draw with symmetry here and there. If I turn this off, you can see simply I have started working on one side. Also, you could start unmasking by clicking this unmask in here. The underneath it, you would have the quick smooth. So now unmask is allowing me to unmask. So if you understand what I'm trying to do now, I'm just trying to show you how you could somehow start manipulating this glazing that is happening uh, on your donut. So in this case, I, oh, it's starting the auto save and I'm happy to auto save it. So I would write donut and that would be my auto save file. Always remember to save your file, even if you're working on your iPad. So, so, okay, Quantilion, we understand this is what we have been doing. What? How can we turn this into glazing? Well, if you go into mask setting in here, underneath you have certain options such as engrave and extract. And you have a shell for extract and you have a split. In this case, I want to extract it. And I want to leave it without changing any of these for you to look into the impact. So click on extract. Well. It extracted some object. It doesn't look much different, and that's because it has the same material. Let me change this material to be something a little bit different. And now you can see it has extracted my donut, but it does not look natural. And that's because our selection was on a higher, on a lower resolution. So what I'll do at this stage is I would like to subdivide my actual donut. And in here, I can go to topology, click on subdivide. And now I have a better resolution. I can go again and click again on subdivide. Be very careful, careful how many subdivide you're clicking on, because it depends on your computer, on your computer, on your iPad, <laughs> and it depends on the complexity of your geometry. Still, I am using the mask and I am, as you can see, I have not changed anything regarding the in in intensity and the radius. And I start going around giving my donut a little bit of glazing, drooling, tasty, chocolate, whatever it is, effect. And it might take a time, as you can see, I'm moving between my finger and my pencil, sometimes using unmask and sometimes mask. And this looks okay. 
let me just do this with a little bit of a dripping probably somewhere here you could always do drippings if you would like your donut to be dripping so i do this on a couple of area here and probably in here okay so i have this in place this is not perfect but it might be with time sometimes you're forgetting area so i'm just moving around making sure that my donut looks okay this all looks good so let's start with the sh shell go to again while i'm still in mask go to the setting mask in here and you would find that shell is there if i click extract that looks okay if you would like to see the color of this that looks better however i will undo undo and i would create a shell but with the border smoothness moved somehow in between and i can give it a little bit of more thickness and if i click extract now you can see it looks way better it has a smoothness impact to it but it looks a little bit too chocolatey for me i don't like my my donut that much chocolatey let's click again on here and that's how it looks like that looks good so let's start with changing the material for this so we can work on it while the actual material is there it happened that i've been using the same material from my non non shock uh, tmt tmnt michelangelo scene however if you would like to change this color i would like something chocolatey probably moving more toward the orange chocolate um so somewhere like here i don't like to have metalness usually chocolate would not have me much metalness but could have less roughness so somewhere like here click on paint all and now you would have your donut in place now your donut is perfect what you could do is start smoothing some of these jagged area if this wireframe is annoying you just click again here and that would remove it so now what i'll do is i click on smooth while i am on the glazing layer so in here i can rename this to be glazing uh, delete and glazing so under glazing i can click on the smooth and i start smoothing some of these angles that might be a little bit harsh if you're still unsure about the resolution of these you could always go back so you can see inside here what's happening sometimes what happens is that you tell or you have the auto select on and if you have the auto select on what happens every time you tap double tap any layer it would automatically select that layer for you so if you can see here if i double tap this it selected my body and you can see here it has body and in here it has the glazing so you can turn this off in settings but for now i would like to use it so i would go back and i start smoothing some of these if you feel that the details is too much refined that you can't actually smooth them as much as you want it is good opportunity for you now to remesh it and remeshing it is select the glazing or, uh, and go to your scene and on this scene uh, you can sorry go to your topology and under topology you would have resolution and this you could choose how big or small your remesh to be and as you can see i have put it somewhere it's like 70 90 that looks okay and it remade all of these and this would allow me to do a better smoothing and even the niciest uh, looking chocolate so while chocolate should not sub or is not supposed to be looking this nice i would add some smudges to it and i would change the perfection 
of how it looks like in a moment but I just want you to get used to the pen and the actual uh, process so I'm still working on the glazing I have the symmetry on I have the smooth on and I'm just smoothing some of these corner if you would like to isolate this to have a little bit more control you could simply do this by clicking on solo which is the one in here and now I've started just going around and providing a little bit of smoothness and why this looks so perfect to be a donut let's add some layer to it so go to clay and under clay I just want to make sure that I have my alpha accurate so you could change your alpha by the way from here I usually use this and this and of course you could import as many alpha as you want and I'll show you how you could use them in a moment so I have my alpha here and I could remove actually my symmetry and then start playing a little bit with adding some imperfection to this glazing mimicking or trying to look into what I have in here you can always go back and smooth these like that and that would make your donut less perfect and that looks good so let's go back to solo and let me change the material and some texturing on this body of the donut so I've double selected or you can go to here and select the body and once I have, which is the door actually, I should name it the door. Uh, I go to mask because my previous mask is still on. I would clear it by clicking here. And now I have my mask clear. What I would also recommend if I want to start seeing this similar to what I have in here, I can give it a little bit of material. So rather than using one of these, I could add a new material. In this material, what I would like to do is use a color from somewhere as a reference. And you can see I've used this image. I don't want this to be to have any roughness. Sorry, I'd want this to have plenty of roughness and probably no metalness. And that would be my dough. And if I ch turn off my wire, that still looks very perfect, Quantilian. Yes, it does. And that's why we want to add some noise to it. So rather than using clay this time, I would like to use the brush tool. And in here, you would have automatic brush noise. And I think this scratch came with Nomad. If you would like to see the impact of this, I would encourage you to move to a matte cap and you can see now the impact on a matte cap seems a little bit clearer. What I started with on the brush, making sure that my radius is good or accurate and then I am moving my pencil in a way that is random. I would remove this and I'll bring, uh, I would isolate it by clicking on solo in here and I will go back and add a little bit of imperfection to this donut. As you can see from inside, you have this kind of bits uh, that's from the uncooked or overcooked dough. You can see that this is a scratch tool. You can always bring any tools you have. If you have question regarding these, Please feel free to ask this question and I'm happy to provide another video uh, showing you different uh, brushes and how you could actually create them. So I, I'm just going around, this might take a time, but what I would suggest to you to do is to experiment. So I've brought this kind of noisy material and as you can see now, the more I draw, it has a different effect. But for this material, rather than me using a brush i would like you to try something called the stamp and in the stamp it's allowing me to do a big stamp so you could do interesting things so for example if you want uh, your donut to have planet earth on it <laughs> you could have something like that you could change this to subtract 
and that would take it the other way around. So the concept of brush, clay, move, uh, sorry, brush, clay, uh, crease, and flatten and inflate, they all have subtract and additive or addition next to it. Um, okay, so we were in stamp. I would go to noise stamp, which is somewhere like this. I would change the setting. I wouldn't actually. It's grab dynamic radius, meaning that my grab would focus on the dynamic. So you can do stuff like that. It's not something that I am fan of now or for this tutorial. So let's move the intensity small slowly to somewhere like one probably nine nine is too much so i'm moving it to three probably yeah three looks okay and now i start drawing these again in life in real life this situation you can't tell exactly that there is a specific pattern for how the donut look like there is this kind of controlled chaos um, and this is how I like to work with different objects especially those objects that has this kind of textures or noise now the last thing I would also like to do is to experiment with another type of brushes so I have this um, I could use this probably and that would give a little bit of imperfection. So the most important bit is we're trying to get some imperfection in here. And now, if I bring back my chocolate, it looks okay. Now, let's go back to the PBR. And you can see now under my PBR, this looks okay, not perfect. Why? Because this in here does not look as smooth as I want them to be. So for my glazing I can go to inflate and inflate is simply allowing you to have like this kind of bubbles uh, and in here as you can see you can make this strip a little bit better and I could also add these into areas in here I, I have set it to add rather than subtract so keep that in mind I just want to double check my subdivide and you can see here once i've subdivided my glazing it's start taking shape and looking okay now that looks perfect for a donut is there a way to add a little bit of coloration into the body yes so simply rather than using a stamp tool you could use a paint tool and in your paint tool, you could change the material. And rather than using a normal brush, which is the dot brush, you can use the dynamic radius. And now I have a different color. As you can see, it has an impact with a brush that is square in here. But that's not what I would like to use. I would like this to be a little bit darker a little bit darker and i would like my brush to be something like i just wait for the auto save to be completed to be something like this in here and now you can see that it's sad to erase and that's why it looks white if i undo set this back into color and you can see that there's kind of color what I don't like about it is the intensity. It is too intense for me. So I push the intensity down and now you can see that I have this imperfection. You can add a little bit of a red into it if you would like to. Now the last tip before the ending this donut tutorial is if you would like for example to have this kind of decoration on top. Is there an easy way to do it? Well, yes. Remember I've talked about mask and we've done masking for the glazing. I would like to use masking on top of the, sorry, we've done glaze, uh, masking to create the glazing after the body. I would like to use masking this time 
with a specific brush that I've created. And you can see that nothing would happen here because it is set to unmask and it is dot. However, if I change the brush here from being dot into being dynamic radius and start doing these, you can adjust even the fall off. So I don't want the fall off to be that shape. I want it to be exactly this. And I would start going around, giving it some randomness. Some area might need some reworking. So if I go back to my mask and set the fall off to be the normal fall off and the brush again to be the none and set it to dot and go to my unmask and then clean some area that would make it look better. So I'm just cleaning some area again to add a little bit or a more level of randomness. And once you're happy with that, you can simply go to mask, extract, shell thickness, click on extract and I can simply make these in white and here is your donut. Now let's make this ready to be rendered. I have my donut in place. I might want to smooth some of these um, sprinkles. So let's click on smooth. Make sure that I am on the mesh, which is now called, oops, no, no, I know what a mesh is delete this called sprinkles and click OK. I would like to smooth this a bit so I just isolate it and as you can see it has created two layer. Um, I'm just smoothing around while you probably can't see exactly what the smoothing is doing. It is doing something believe me and it would look better when we finally render it and now I can bring everything back again. Uh, you can see the donut is ready. Let's get rid of the reference image by clicking on the background here and turn it off. I would like to have a more of a dynamic light, nicer light, more of a natural light. So something like this. You can use any HDR you would like. Um, I can also recommend for you some HDRs, but this looks way better than what I expected it to be. Now let's turn on my post-processing. So what I'll do is I'll max the samples. I'll add a full resolution. I'll add a reflection SSR and I'll add an ambient inclusion. I could change the strength. So it's not too much like this and it's not too little, so somewhere in between. And if you would like, you can do some depth of field. So simply click on here and click on an area where the depth of field is there. I personally don't use it much except for big scenes. I would like to change the camera here if you would like to perspective and your donut is ready to be exported. So I've set all my post process to high. You could add a little bit of bloom if you would like that effect. Sometimes bloom is nice. So it's not too much in here, but it's still looking good. By the way, you could have some tone mapping, which change the exposure, add a contrast, and you have a chromatic abbreviation which allow you to add this kind of weird effect of blue and red channels. Anyhow, for me, I'm really happy with my donut as it is, and I would like now to share it with all my friends. Go to the file, click on export. I like to export it on a high resolution, even though it would add some area from outside the canvas. It would recommend to save, so let's save and click on export and you have your image here save your donut and it is ready to be shared 
last thing before um, I leave this video, you can always keep an eye here on the total of available um, RAMs for you and how much you've used. And if you would like a nice 3D of your donut, just click on this Nomad Sculpt here, click on Turnable, and you could see simply that now you have a turning donut. And you could zoom in, zoom out, move it in, move it out. And if you do some screen recording, then probably you could see the donut as a video. So let's end this video with a spinning donut. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comment or suggestion, leave them in the box below. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you've learned one thing or two. This is Quintilion again, and I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.